gentlemen. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning. Bernard. How, Bernard, are you? how are you? Very well, thank you. Bernard, it seems like everybody is heading back into Makola. Really? Because yes, Saturday it was bad. Today is worse. It's because they feel there will be a lockdown soon. So they want to go and buy again. Because yeah. the things they bought last week are finished. Yeah, man, total chaos right here. And, and, and Bernard, I, I think some of these reactions are also fueled by people who are being irresponsible with information they are putting out on COVID-19. Yes. Um, like, There's a WhatsApp trending that yeah, the, the, yes. the, the, the like, government like, last, last last night. No, it uh, means you also have irresponsible friends because a lot of people have sent it to you. <laughs> it yeah, means yeah. that the people you are you are talking about, you know them. So, so let me help people with a bit of um, information. Mm. Like last night on social media, it was being circulated that ninety something people had been confirmed this and that and that. Look, in Ghana, the official source is the government of Ghana, and they announced these through the Ministry of Information. Mm. They have a platform, ghanahealthservices.org forward slash COVID-19, mm -hmm. which hardly stays on these days. Mm, because too many people are there. But that doesn't give anybody the right to, to, be, be, to be circulating unconfirmed, unconfirmed information. If you do that, you put people into panic. Mm -hmm. So let's just wait. For, because look, nobody runs Noguchi and nobody runs KCCR. It's the state which is working with these institutions and they are the ones conducting the test. Exactly. So if you have your Noguchi at home or your KCCR, when you get the results, keep it to yourself. That's all. Let the government announce. Don't throw figures around to cause panic amongst the people. There's already enough confusion. In the because state. yesterday, there's even this platform people were sharing around, worldometers.info. Worldometers doesn't belong to the World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people trying to say that. It, it's a group of people who have set up a platform it's got some respect because over the years they've been able to collect a lot of information, but it's not run by the World Health Organization. So let's wait for the government and the ministry to announce the results from the two main institutions that are conducting the test. You can have your misgivings about when the results are coming. You can have your um, reservations as to whether the results being announced are the true reflection of what is happening. In the, but you are not KCCR and you are not Noguchi. That's all. This is but important. If, if you are you have this why is there is there is the result for you no i think the point though is that we also have to be a bit more responsible when you receive something because yeah certainly that's, it, it's that's one thing it's one thing to send something to a journalist asking if this is true but it's another thing to just circulate it to a group and then cause all kinds of so panic, panic in there but i think that some people should also just tune out to social media if you don't if you can't manage it just close and it also media yes. houses that are also publishing yeah, this because it. you have access to the government you have access to the ministers they may be slow in response because they could be in meetings mm -hmm. crisis meetings and all those things but wait and it's not everything you hear that i have to call somebody please is this true? and rushing <laughs> to and and everything you know, doesn't give anybody everything. anyway you see, and the other point is that there's also regular briefing. So we eventually no. Yeah. So let's all take a deep breath. Breathe in. Out. One more time. Breathe in. Hold it for 20 seconds and see if you're okay. Oh, Master Yedin. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Breathe in. Mm. Okay. Let's start with the headlines now. Well, the Daily Graphic has a very strange headline today. Which is what? Mighty contract COVID-19. And they have put Prince Charles here. Seriously. Actor Idris Elba Seriously. on the front page. Voter, <laughs> voter registration suspended. Mm. Help arise for COVID-19 battle. Mm. Jack Ma fulfills pledge. Now, the Ghanaian Times, Jack Ma's uh, test kits, PPEs arrive. Government takes the delivery of 20,000 test kits, mm. 1,000 PPEs, and 100,000 masks. GMA calls for nationwide lockdown to contain COVID-19. Dr. Awa presents items to constituencies to combat COVID-19 and COVID-19 updates. Ghana records 68 cases, one more death. Daily Guide also has the EC postpones new register story. Lockdown now. Doctors urge Nana COVID-19 infects 68. Three dead medical supplies arrive. The Ghanaian, uh, the Chronicle, pressure mounts on government to declare total lockdown. Hotel business now on ground zero. Trot, trot, reduce passenger numbers per row. I have some figures on the hotels that are shut, that have shut down and the ones that are about shutting down. Mm. No food in parliament as MPs pray for God's mercy. Front page of the Daily Statesman, impending voters registration on hold, easy to come out with new date. Parliament bans visitors as speaker orders non-essential staff to go on leave. Pressure mounts on government to lock down country. The new crusading guide, EC suspends registration. Police informant bathed with acid for exposing cocaine dealers. Thermal shooting incident, security apparatus allegedly shields kingdom exim boss. And COVID-19, 
Ghana Health Service, Ghana Armed Forces, please, National Security, receive McDonald hand sanitizers. Front page of the BNFT paper, COVID-19, cargo inflow normal. Ghana Ports and Harbors Authorities and MPS. Also on COVID-19, together we shall weather the storm. Baumia says time to push digital transactions is now. And the vice president is on the front page of the business finder. Universal QR code Proxy Pay launched to enhance digitized payments. Stimulus packages, ICU cautions government. COVID-19, Ghana needs 15 billion Ghana cities for a month's lockdown. And GCB Bank introduces wallet limits on G Money service. Let me take you online, citynewsroom.com. Health Economy says we need to increase testing capacity. This is a coronavirus story. Also in the news, using COVID-19, EC using COVID-19 has cover up equipment for registration not ready. This is Asir Unketia. Ghana returns a crowd-bound BA flight seeking to evacuate UK nationals. Meanwhile, declare nationwide lockdown now, according to the Ghana Medical Association. NDC also says use 3 billion euro or dollar euro bond for COVID-19 fight. Let's go to business news. Greta appeals to banks to renegotiate interest on loans due to impact of COVID-19. This is citybusinessnews.com. Also, event vendors lament locked up cash after cancellation of event over COVID-19. And uh, the same story, Ghana returns a crab-bound BA flight seeking to evacuate UK nationals. That's a very serious one indeed. Meanwhile, Vice President launches universal QR code and proxy pay to boost digital payment. Now, if you go to my journal online, four person reportedly dies of coronavirus in Ghana. Um, Deputy British Ambassador to Hungary dies aged 37 after contracting coronavirus. Meanwhile, QN USD research scientist opposes GMS lockdown call. So the jury is still out on this lockdown issue. And um, let's go to the U.S. Virus surges in U.S. as death toll passes 1,000 in that country. Mm. And meanwhile, the U.S. Senate has approved a $2.2 trillion coronavirus bill aimed at slowing economic free fall in that country. We are looking for how much? 100 million. <laughs> Monkeys play by sizes. Meanwhile, if you go to China, up to 10% of recovered virus patients in Wuhan steady test positive. So they've, rec they've recovered, but 10% of them still have the virus in them. So let's start with the GMA and some of the Ghana stories. Okay, then if you want the GMA, let me take you to the Daily Guide Yeah, I think first. that's the big story. All right, lockdown now. Doctors Edge Nana, mm -hmm. story by Jamila Akwele Okechri. Mm -hmm. The Ghana Medical Association has urged President Akufuado to lock down the country in a bid to stem the spread of the coronavirus disease. In a statement signed by Vice President Dr. Frank Ankobia, the association said the lockdown, though not a comfortable decision for leadership and citizens alike, is a proven option backed by science, and along with the other measures will ultimately be in our best interest. The GMS said the call had become necessary because of the threat posed by the distributing trend of community spread of the pandemic and the obvious inadequate logistics and human resource of the nation's health system to deal with increased numbers of COVID-19 infection, especially in the severe to critical cases. We call on all Ghanaians to support such a move in the national interest to save our nation from the devastating effect of this pandemic, mm. it said. Okay. Now, I know there are dissenting opinions on this. I think you have a story on that. Well, that's on myjournline.com. A different group is saying that they don't agree with the call for lockdown. It's a research scientist at KNUST. Stories by Amma Cromwell of My Journal Online. And it reads, a research scientist at KNUST, Department of Medical Diagnostics, disagrees with the GMA's call for national lockdown amid the coronavirus outbreak. Dr. Michael Ousu suggests that government should rather identify the epicenters in the country and implement the lockdown instead of a nationwide lockdown. He told Newsnight on Wednesday that <clears throat> we have collected lots of data from the contact tracing. We have information about the people who have the disease and where they have been. So with this information, we can mark these places out, liaise with the telecommunication companies to get the nearest coordinates of these people. Then we can target size within Accra or size within Kumasi. You can implement the policy. And so he, she, he's arguing that a nationwide lockdown <clears throat> will adversely affect livelihoods of Ghanaians, particularly the people in the informal sector. And further indicates that a hastened lockdown cannot predict how long the lockdown will last and how successful it will be. So it's, it's talking about targeted lockdowns. Mm. And on lockdowns, the um, Ghana Tourism Authority 
has enforced their directive to lock down beaches. Now, the story mm. says the Ghana Tourism Authority has moved to enforce its directive on the closure of beaches in the capital in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak. Mm -hmm. A task force led by the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Christian Juman, with support from the Ghana Police Service on Tuesday, served notices to several beaches to caution them against opening the beaches to people. Some beaches, some beaches visited included the La Pleasure Beach, Coligono Beach, North Sea Beach, La Boma Beach, Sunshine Beach, Shushu, and Sango Beaches, all in the greater Accra. Let me give you some scientific information, okay. not to just scare you, but to just give you. So up to 10% of recovered patients in Wuhan study tested positive later. Okay. A doctor said, a hospital staff in the city say there's no evidence that these patients became infectious after recovery. So it probably means that the... Thing, the virus is just lingering. Yes, tests carried out on patients suggest between three to ten percent give positive tests after being discharged. That's uh, uh, one story there from China, and then Chinese health experts warn that patients can also get reinfected. Mm. So US is also advising against travel to China, even though. Uh, things seem to have been getting better in that country. Now, on the lockdown, uh, the business finder says Ghana needs 15 billion cities for a month's lockdown. Ooh. Yes, and the story by August Namwa says Ghana needs over 15 billion Ghana cities for a 28-day lockdown, mm. the Institute for Liberty and Policy Innovation has said. Okay. According to the think tank, as a small and medium-scale enterprise economy, the government must provide tax rebates, financial reliefs, refunds, and social assistance to support local businesses. By explaining further, it's pointed out that registered businesses and firms would have to shut down operations with employees going home with salaries or not. Mm. The informal economy would suffer from the lockdown because of lost daily sales and income. Mm -hmm. And the sector may not directly benefit from the emergency financial response. This would reduce individual income and purchasing power. And also on the stimulus package, the ICU is speaking. They have cautioned the government. Now, the story is uh, in the Business Finder page 7. It says the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union is urging caution on the part of government in responding to calls for stimulus packages to support businesses affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Secretary General of the Union, Mr. Solomon Kote, warns that government must not be rushed into committing funds in the form of a rescue package for businesses without a clear plan as to how the affected firms will source for those funds. All right. Let me give you a couple of corona um, latest stories. And where common sense refused to prevail, COVID has brought a temporary sense <laughs> of calm. Mm. Voter registration suspended. Okay. The Electoral Commission, that's on page 16 of the Daily Graphic, the Electoral Commission has postponed the upcoming voter registration until further notice. This as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The AC said it should review the decision at the end of April or early May this year. Now, when you go to page 24, the same paper, allow ships to access your ports, mm -hmm. Tad appeals. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development has appealed to governments in countries affected by the COVID-19 pandemic to allow commercial ships to have access to their respective ports. Mm -hmm. According to the General Secretary of UNCTAD, Mr. Mukisa Kitui, it was important to keep the supply chain space open by allowing maritime trade and cross-border transport to thrive, even as efforts were being made to find a cure for the disease. Now, according to him, the global maritime transport industry was critical in the midst of the pandemic since it carried food, raw materials, general goods, and essential medical supplies <clears throat> to countries. Meanwhile, uh, Ghana, this is a, a story on citynewsroom.com. Ghana returns a crab-bound BA flight seeking to evacuate UK national. Story says, as Ghana intensifies its ban on travels in and out of the country uh, by closing its borders to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, a British Airways-bound flight to Ghana was on Monday... March 23 returned to the UK despite initial permission from for the British High Commission to evacuate more than 360 UK nationals from Ghana to the UK. An initial agreement to a request by the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority said the approval was given by the Interministerial Committee on COVID-19. But City Business News understands that the decision was rescinded even before the flight could land in Ghana, leaving the British national stranded. The GCA has not provided any information influencing the last-minute reversal. However, uh, sources understand that such emergency permissions will need to be approved by the Office of the President, suggesting that the presidential directive may have cancelled the initial approval by both the GCA and COVID-19 committee. Mm -hmm. So the ban on travel remains for two weeks after which the government will review based on the situation in the country. Now, early this week, markets in Accra were disinfected. Uh, tomorrow, markets in Ashanti region will be disinfected. And that story is in the Chronicle. Mm. Uh, Sebastian Freku writes that all markets in the 43 MMDs in the Ashanti region are to be disinfected in a mass spraying exercise on Friday, March 27, 2020. 
the exercise is programmed by the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development as part of the government's efforts to manage the Now, still on, on this issue, we have a story here. Health economy stresses need to refocus or to focus on increasing testing capacity. And it says the government needs to focus on building the processing and testing capacity of labs in Ghana as it moves to deal with the novel coronavirus pandemic. Now, Kofi Kwachi, health economist, has said, with the cases of the virus expected to rise sharply in the short term, uh, uh, Mr. Kwachi noted that on uh, noted on CTTV's point of view program that Ghana was at a stage where the testing was paramount. Accurate, speedy testing is the game here. We have to be able to detect these things early so we can begin isolation protocols if we need to. All right, let's do some fintech and COVID. Mm -hmm. That's on the front page of the BNFT. The vice president is still busy. Mm -hmm. Together we shall weather this storm, Baumi, and the story is on page three by Thomas Moore Adingo says that Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is hopeful that efforts being put in place by government and stakeholders will help stem the impact of coronavirus on the country's economy. Now, he says that we have been we have been always preaching about the many benefits of electronic payments over cash transactions, but never have the benefits been so apparent than these times. It is now clear that electronic payments also have health benefits. Now, this is uh, when he was launching the of, he was launching Ghana's universal QR code and proxy pay system. Now, the QR code, he explained, leverages on existing technologies to enable traders and businesses receive payments without a point of sale device. Mm -hmm. Now, the proxy pay ensures that every bank account is given a phone number to be a proxy for the bank account number for individuals or a chosen alias for companies. By this, making payments to individual bank accounts can be done through the phone number, similar to mobile money. You know, but I've also been thinking, the COVID situation will provide the best test of success mm -hmm. for our digital address system. Mm -hmm. All the money that we spent on the digital address system, we will find out if now, it actually works. Now, let's go to Jack Ma. Ghana takes delivery of Jack Ma's medical supplies. This story is actually a lead story in some of the newspapers. Yeah. And the story on which of the web papers do you want to read? Um, out? So Graphic has it. Daily Guide uh, has it. Well, I just wanted to run through the well. numbers of what they brought. Okay. Okay. So the numbers, we got 20,000 test kits, mm -hmm. 1,000 PPEs, mm -hmm. and 100,000 marks. So those are the 1,000 PPEs. Yes, and 100,000 marks. Those are the things they well, the Minister of Health, who received the items at KIA, also gave details of what they themselves had procured. He said they have taken inventory of close to 30,000 PPEs. This is what the ministry itself procured. Mm -hmm. Several quantities of masks and even sanitizers registered 18 Ghanaian companies to produce sanitizers here in Ghana. So that's in addition to what Jack Ma has brought. So hopefully the medical facilities will get... All of these and I'm things. still making an appeal. At this point, we should not be buying the sanitizers. It should Gov be free. The government should make it free. Available for everybody to use. I'm uh, still okay. appealing. Now, is there any non-COVID-19 story? Well, of yes. Tesla reopens 12-year bond. What? This is the business finder. Tesla. Reporting, yes, that okay. the energy sector support levy PLC has reopened the 12-year Ghana CD dominated bond. Mm. The debt instrument, which was originally issued on January 13, 2020, was open to investors on Tuesday, March 24, 2020. The offer will constitute tranche E4B under the 10 billion Ghana CD bond program. Esla said the target size of the tranche is 600 million Ghana cities. However, the minimum offer to be accepted by the issuer is 300 million Ghana cities, while the maximum will be 1.86 billion cities. Also in Kumasi, and that's on the back page of the Daily Graphic, rains in Kumasi, Tamale, exposed metropolises to waste materials. Mm. Downpours in Kumasi and Tamale last Tuesday exposed and discriminated waste disposal among residents of the two metropolises. The rains resulted in loads of plastic waste and debris being scattered on roads and open spaces. Mm -hmm. From Kumasi, Manuel Bar reports that one hour of rains last Tuesday afternoon resulted in rubbish strewn on open spaces. The Susan River bursted banks, making way for heavy amount of waste, including plastics and empty bottles, to be scattered across adjoining areas. In Tamale, Samuel Dudu reports that the northern region capital that... Uh, that they had they had flooding in some suburbs and that the Sanarugu, especially in the Sanarugu municipality, the rain started around four fifteen and subsided around six twenty AM. You know, we, we brought a report earlier this week that Bimbila um there was flooding yes. and about a hundred people um were displaced. were displaced. Now the Ghanaian Times reports the same story. They are saying two hundred residents homeless 
and Bimbla after rainstorm renders them um yeah. So All right, now the Ministry of Education food, they need um roofing sheets, they need mattresses, mm. they need basic things to help them. Now the Ministry by. of Education is appealing to telcos to waive cost of accessing online educational materials. Story by Lauren Subway for City Business News. It says the Ministry of Education is appealing to telcos operating the country to waive all charges on educational content for students as government plans to roll out a virtual learning platform due to COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the president directed schools to shut down for four weeks effective Monday, March 16, as part of other measures to curtail the spread of the virus. Globally, millions of students are out of school to curtail the spread of the virus, although some have taken teaching and learning to virtual platforms to keep up. Data usage has gone up as many students are now at home, while some workers are operating from home. Now, at a press conference, Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe called on telcos to support government's impending virtual learning platform to zero rate the cost of online educational materials meaning that if you have educational materials on the virtual platform, it will be free. And as for so far, Vodafone is the only telco doing it now. We hope in due time others will do the same. Dr. Opoku Prem. I think the others have also done the same. Um, but, really? Yeah, but I think importantly, this telco conversation, let's look at this um, communication service tax, the CST. Hmm. If the government wants to do something to reduce the pressure on telco consumers, we need to work on the CST now. All right, let's uh, let's leave it here. Thank you very much, Kojo. Thank you, Godfrey. That was the news of review. Coming up next is the.